Hi there, today we're focusing on uh, object-oriented programming and that uh, means that we have to understand what classes are. So pr in procedural programming, um, you create programs that use a set of procedures that work together to perform a specific task and uh, it's basically just procedure after procedure after procedure and this is the type of programming that you know you you pretty much are used to. Uh, procedural programming uses uh, functions, what we call functions methods in Java, um, but uh, there, there are no objects in procedural programming. For example, um, the, the programs that you've created so far, uh, normally you know, you've got your class heading, then you've got your main method um, heading. In your main method you might have statement after statement after statement, and then you might have you know, more methods, but there, there's, no, uh, there, there, there's no using of objects in um, procedural programming. So object-oriented pro programming focuses on creating objects and an object is a uh, is a software entity that contains data and procedures. Um, uh, data is contained in an object's fields. Uh, uh, field, variable, same thing. Uh, procedures are instructions that the object performs. So a procedure is, uh, is, is a method. So you've got variables and you've got methods um, in object-oriented programming. This right here uh, is uh, a visual representation of, of an object. Uh, right here you would have the data, you'd have your variables right here, and then you've got your methods. These little circular things uh, represent uh, a, a method. So what, what the heck does all this mean? And if you're confused, that's okay, because um, it is confusing at first. It takes a while to wrap your mind around the entire concept of object-oriented programming. So, but but just, just hang on and we'll, we'll see if we can make it happen. So think of a, a blueprint uh, for, for a house. Um, right here we have a blueprint and uh, my question for you would be, you know, is a blueprint a house? Well no, it's, it's not a, an actual house, it's the plans for a house. And using a blueprint you can create, you know, as many houses as you want from this same blueprint. Uh, but the blueprint is not the house, it's just the plans for a house. Well, a class, it's, it's the same thing. The class is not the actual object, the class is the blueprint for the object. And using um, the class, you can have multiple objects. So think of a class as a, uh, as a blueprint. And when we say the word object and instances, same thing. You can have multiple instances of a house from a blueprint. You can have multiple objects of a house from a blueprint. So let's think about, you know, Alice, and let's think about our good old buddy, the hair from Alice. Here he is, and his uh, wife beater, and uh, his, his uh, you know, funny teeth, and, and everything, okay? So right here we've got our buddy, the hair, and when you first select the hair in Alice, it says class. Well, that's because this is the blueprint for the hair, okay? It's not the actual, it's not an actual object of a hair, it's the blueprint for the hair. It's the class. And when you select it, Alice asks if you want to add an instance of the hair to the world. So, you know, this little window will come up and it'll say add instance to the world. And you say yes, you click on that. And when you do that, it adds an instance to the world. It, add, it adds an, a, a hair object to the world. It doesn't add the class, it adds an instance of the class to the world. And you can add as many instances, as many hair objects, as you want to in that world. Remember, the word instance, object, same thing. Um, so they're all instances or objects of that same hair class in the world. Now, remember, the hair class, it has both. It's got data fields. It's got uh, variables, properties, data fields, same thing. And it's got procedures. It's got methods. So the data fields are its properties, its variables. For example, you've got the color of the hair. You can you know, make them red or you can make them purple. Um, you've got the opacity of the hair. If you want to make them kind of see-through, you can change that. These are uh, the data fields. These are the properties. These are the variables for the hair. Likewise, you also have procedures for the hair. The procedures are the methods, and uh, the hair has the following methods. It's got, you know, move, turn, roll, resize. We can even create a custom method using this button right here. 
So let's apply these concepts to a rectangle. Okay, just like the hair had, you know, uh, you know, data fields, variables, and also had uh, procedures, methods. We can apply these concepts to a, a rectangle. So look at this for for a quick second and ask yourself, what variables does this rectangle have? If you said to yourself, oh, well, the length is a variable and the width is a variable, you're exactly right. Okay, so. Um, and this, of course, goes hand in hand with the demo that we did today. Uh, what are the rectangle data fields? Length and width. Those are the properties, right? Uh, the properties would be length would be like five. That'd be the property, and width would be, uh, you know, eight. Okay. But it has these data fields. It has these variables. And this is what our object would now look like because we've got our data fields and then we've got length and then we've got width right here. These are the data fields. These are the variables right there for our object, our rectangle object. Now let's think about our methods that will operate on this data, that will use this data. So what are the methods? Well, we want to be able to set the width, we want to be able to set the length, get the width, get the height, and then calculate the area. And here's how we do that. We've got our set length method. We've got a set width method. We've got a get length method, a get width method. We've got a calc area method. And these are method methods that operate on the data. For example, the set length method is going to set the length. The set width is going to set the width. The get length is going to grab whatever uh, the you know the data is in the DBL length um, variable right here and return it. And so is the get width. It's going to grab the the data in here. It's going to return that. And then we've got the calc area, which takes these two values, multiplies them, and returns the area. So these are methods that operate on the data for our object. So this is what our rectangle object looks like um, using this object uh, gra uh, graphic representation. So think about classes like this. You've got a main class, uh, and this is like the main program that will use the other classes, and then you've got object classes, and these are classes that you know will create objects. So here's an example of a rectangle class, and uh, we uh, did this during our, our demonstration today. If you haven't seen the demonstration, please check it out. Uh, it'll make this code make sense. And now that we have our class, we can start creating objects of that class using them. And so here's how. We uh, first you know, create our main class, and then inside that main class, we're going to call the rectangle class. We're going to create rectangle objects. And so how do, you, how do you create a rectangle object? Well, easy. You've created objects before. For example, you've created multiple keyboard objects in the past. And how do you do that? We say scanner keyboard equals new scanner system.in. So the scanner object's created and it's connected to the system.in object. New is a Java keyword, it's creating a scanner object in memory. And keyboard is the variable of the data type scanner. So keyboard's the name of the object of the scanner. Uh, and remember, it's a it's an object that uses the scanner class. So it's uh, we took the blueprint right here. We created a keyboard object. Same for decimal format. Uh, we have our decimal format class here. And right here, we're creating an object called formatter using this blueprint. Um, this is the, uh, the Java keyword it says, hey, create a new one, and we're going to uh, uh, create objects that are formatted this way. Likewise, here's our rectangle object. Uh, the new, new is the Java keyword. Um, right here, we're creating a new uh, rectangle object. And then box is the variable of the data type rectangle. So box is our new, uh, is the name of our object that we've created. So uh, right here, this is code from a main class. So using the rectangle class, I'm going to create a rectangle object saying rectangle box equals a new rectangle. And then I have access to those methods from rectangle. So I can say box dot set length. And I can set the length of this box object right here. So here's some important terms. Encapsulation is the combining of data and code into a single object, and that's uh, like that graphic representation that you looked at earlier. Object reusability is uh, being able to reuse uh, code over and over and over again. Um, members, uh, classes, uh, methods, and fields. Mutator method, same thing as a set length method. Accessor method is, is the same thing as a get method. And that's enough for today. Uh, in the future, we're going to talk about public variables, private variables, public methods, private methods, and UML diagrams. Thanks for tuning in. And if any of this did not make sense, just please review it and look at that demonstration that we did. We'll talk to you later.